Wiener boy. Guess who? <laughs> <laughs> Hello everybody, how is everybody doing? Hope everyone is doing okay. This is going to be a little bit of a rant. Now I was forced to bring this to your attention. It's it's not like, um, yeah, you can't do this. This is the wrong way of working on guitars, okay? And uh, just for your information, um, that's why I'm bringing this up. So let's kind of get into this whole fucking thing first off uh, as you see before you you have a gibson headstock yep it's a gibson headstock. while yeah, it yeah. is not a true gibson headstock per se it is a actual it is an authentic Wait, I thought you said it was a gibson. gibson headstock <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It is an authentic Gibson headstock. Okay, um, I want to say uh, that was the most dumbest joke I've ever heard. So let's go to the, if that was even a joke, I don't know. Next. Because the most important thing we're going to need to do, actually, is... Come on. Take the screws off. The back of all the right. existing tuners. Hold on, hold on. Now, all right. He did not relieve the string tension on those tuners before removing the screws on the back of the headstock. Now, for a person who got the wood wet trying to be like me and sand down the uh, headstock and trying to polish the finish on it, well, already knows that uh, those ears on each side of the headstock are already kind of weakened and you had to glue it back together and now you're going to end up taking the screws out of the back of the headstock making pressure on the top of the tuning pegs pushing in one direction and, and everyone knows that there's a lot of tension on guitar strings um, you are taking a chance and risking cracking or breaking off the ears on the headstock. Don't do this. Don't do it the way it is shown. Loosen up the strings. Okay, loosen the strings. Next video, please. Okay, me, here we go. I probably should have actually taken the string tension off these tuners before I'm doing yes, this. Yes, you probably should have. The reality is, is they're locked down by the not to begin with so whoa 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 whoa, whoa 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 wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute so your sg has a locking nut now did you put a floyd rose on it too uh how would the nut be locking the strings down besides keeping them in place that's all they're actually doing they're not locking down shit so next video please <laughs> and the great thing about depending on the technique you use to do these you can remove them and replace them back into place and there we go Having problems there, Terry, trying to relieve the tension off the string. Um, if you were left the screws in the back, you wouldn't have had that problem. That's number one. Number two. All right. What technique is used to replace to reuse the old strings? That's what I like to know. Because I, from what I've seen on a lot of guitars that are played and, and used quite a bit, um, when you start relieving the string tension off of the strings, it kind of weakens the string. And the weakest point where I found is either at the bridge or at the tuners. So when you replace the strings, um, possibly break one. 
you know, so it's good to have an extra set of strings off to the side someplace, just in case that happens. And remember, folks, always leave the screws in the back of your headstock when loosening the tension off of the, off the tuners. Uh, and also, um, uh, yeah, that's just a regular fucking nut. Nothing's locking. Next, please. Might be white, polish, polish. All right, again, this is something that I've stressed out quite a bit in a lot of different videos. Um, wipey, wipey, polish, polish with a paper towel is more of scratchy, scratchy, okay? Anybody knows who has ever done finishes before on any material, I don't care, even on plastic, all right? You use a paper towel on anything that has a clear coat or anything that has a polished plastic and you scratch the shit out of it. All right, so that is not polish, polish. And uh, yeah, all you're doing is wipey, wipey. Sorry, man. All right, next, please. Stop right there. Hold it, hold it. Oh, no, don't push, don't push. Oh, oh man. All right. When you are installing tuning pegs, all right, if they aren't sticking up like that when uh, you're installing them, remember those headstocks have glued ears on them, all right, and you're putting tension in that hole, pushing apart the headstock in that ear, okay, um, and if you look at how Gibson does it with the headstocks and their ears and stuff like that, the most of the time the holes for the tuners are right with the seam of the uh, ear glued on to the headstock, yeah, okay. So that's number one. Posting Two. some videos here and there and you're actually out doing some gigs in that more recently. Mm, this is gonna be a little tight. Yes, Terry, that's going to be a little tight. Why is it a little tight, Terry? Because you wet the hole inside of, on the headstock. Um, the wood swell. Go figure, right? Common sense, that's what happens. Don't force that inside there because you're going to pop the ears off of the headstock, just like you did before. Now, the one thing that I do have to say, which he used his brain on this one, is he used a tool to own, route out the hole a little bit bigger to be able to put the tuner into it. Now, that is a big surprise. I'm really surprised that he actually thought of that. I'm surprised he just didn't take the side of his hand and pop it in. Um, good for you, Terry. Some of these are going in nice, nicely, and others are going in pretty crappily. So, uh, yes, Terry, and it, as he said in the video, it was probably because of um, rubbing compound or or polishing compound in the hole. Well, got news for you. Uh, when you slide the tuner in, it scrapes the walls. It'll remove that for you. All right, so here we go again. This part I want you to pay very close attention to and watch how he torques the nut on top of the headstock while he's tightening them on the tuners. So here we go. Now he's cranking on this. You watch, watch it, he's cranking on these things. And this tool is not a bad tool if you use it properly. You do not have to put as much pressure on those nuts the way that he's doing this, okay? Um, and if you're using this tool properly, you wouldn't have this problem or this issue that he's having with this tool. Now you gotta remember, uh, he already broke or cracked or split the ears off the headstock. When you're tightening like this, okay, um, you're putting pressure in that hole. You're trying to expand something. And wood is soft. Wood does have some gift to it. So when you're compressing that, it's pushing this way. Man. Oh, nice. Scratch it with your finger. 
And that is snug. All right, I gotta, I gotta stop this. All right, that is not snug. That is over tightened. Okay, there is no possible way that those tuners should be, those nuts should be that freaking tight on top of the uh, tuners. All right, and on top of this, you risk uh, stripping out the nut inside of the tuner itself or breaking those threads that are under so much pressure those threads are stuck inside of the nut and you're left with it or stuck inside of the tuner and you're left with a shorter nut all right so let's go to the next video i know you guys are probably like oh my god he's doing it again there's a reason for this Oops. Mm -hmm. Now, if those holes were the right size for those tuners, oh, stop torquing it down, man. You wouldn't have to tighten them like that to pull them in. You really shouldn't do that because, again, you're putting pressure in those holes. Oh, I gotta grind my teeth watching this. Oh! Oh, he doesn't do it once, he does it twice. Oh, and he does it a third time. Yes, I have to say something here. Um, Terry, uh, you're not ruining the tip of the nut. You're breaking loose the... Um, plating that's on the nut that's what all those little particles are that you end up wiping off uh using paper towel and uh you're also stripping the sharp edges of the nut uh yeah learn how to use the tool properly before using it because this is what not to do last video all right all right, all right, stop, 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 hold it, hold it, hold it, right there, right there, right there, hold it, hold it, hold it. That's a bottle of Brasso, okay? It is a metal polish, all right? And he is using the metal polish for its purpose, so I got to give him that much credit. But the thing about it is, is anytime you use a type of a metal polish on top of uh, anything that has an open grain in it, any type of a wood that has an open grain in it, which fretboards do, they have an open grain on them. Um, you get that shit inside of the open grain and it turns white, all right? And it's a bitch to get out. Even if you oil the fretboard and then wipe the excess oil off, it's still a bitch to get out of there. Using something like a microfiber cloth helps with this. Not paper towel, uh, not Brillo pad, uh, you know, it, 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 Okay, what are you waiting for? <laughs> now this is where I tell you guys, don't do this. Watch. He's got that fucking polish on the rag and he's rubbing it into the fretboard. Protect your fretboard. Put some tape over it. Get yourself one of those um, those metal uh, fretboard protectors that you put over the fret. Uh, do something other than just wiping it on. Now, surprisingly, he did oil the fretboard. And I'm surprised when he was finished with this, he didn't call it a guitar setup. Because I would really read him out if that's what he called this. All right, now this is the end of the video. As you can see, my green screen is gone. You can see all the tools in the back wall. Now... I have to stress out with this person, okay? Uh, don't follow the information that he's giving out because his information has not been thought through. He is not mechanically inclined. You could tell that by the way he uses his tools. And he's not jumping ahead to the what ifs. 
People would use common sense when they're doing anything mechanically or just everyday living. This person doesn't use common sense very well. And it shows because of his past. I, I even went through it and didn't show too much common sense when I started my YouTube channel, but kind of worked things out a little bit and everything's cool. But, all right, misinformation can cause problems with other people who are trying to learn something and copying other people and find out that there's a problem later on. He could have popped this person, could have popped the ears off of his headstock very easily by over tightening the nut on those tuners. He could have popped the ears off by just removing the screws off of the back of the tuners and not removing or loosening up the strings. Very easily could be done. He's lucky it didn't happen though. Now, I actually have seen people over tighten shit and that's it. It's broke. It's gone. It's no good. Especially when you over tighten the nut that's on a tuner and I don't care what type of tuner that you're using. If it has a nut on the top of it, you don't crank on them. Reason why. Number one, you could strip them out very easily. Those threads are not very thick. They're not very deep and they're easy to strip them out. Number two problem is that if you over tighten a nut on a tuner, you could pop the ring that is inside of the tuner separate off the shank with the threads on it and now you're left with a shorter nut and the, the threaded part is stuck inside that tuner now you're screwed basically unless you have another extra pair of nuts which i doubt terry has now another thing is is that you know the information that has been given if you use this information and you end up having a problem with what you're working on uh there is nobody to blame but the person that gave you that information. So don't do as he does. Please, do yourself a favor. Just walk away from it. Have a laugh. Go to somebody else's video. I'm not going to say go to my video, but go to somebody else's video who's actually been doing this stuff for over 20 years and knows what they're doing, period. Now, really hated to make this video, but it, it's this is misinformation. And this is not good for anybody to be using this type of information for themselves, period. So, yeah. And uh, that's about it, I guess. So do what you will and be careful what you're doing. Be careful who you follow. I know that there's a lot of subscribers that are subscribed to myself and this other person. Um just be careful what you do and how you do it. The information that you were given could cause damage to what you're working on. And again, there is nobody else to blame but the person who gave you that information. Good night, farewell, take care, and I'll see you on the flip side.